What's going on, y'all? Connor from Rock Pokemon here, coming at you with a special Market Monday. We are uh, for the what seems like the fifth time uh, recapping Collecticon Denver. This video, I think, is going to be a little different, though. I am still reeling from uh, the amount of fun I had on this trip. Um, you can go back and see some of the live streams I did uh, with Rob on our Canto Conversations podcast, uh, live on Dan, Catch Em All Collectibles channel, but I can just say this. I am super blessed to be a part of this community, and it is amazing to meet people in person that you've only known online and have them be the same person they are online at the core and even better when you like spend time with them and actually get to know them. So I feel super blessed. Um, Swami, who hosted us at his house in Denver, Jake from Pokenomics, Catch em All Collectibles, old school, got to meet Rob in person finally, Nesto, Cody, Mertz. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Ava, Colson, Retro. Like, we'll get into it a little bit, but wanted to show just some of the pickups uh, and, and tell y'all a little bit about my experience buying and selling um, and, then, and then go from there. So to, to start the, the, the video off, uh, I was able to sell $1,500 worth of sealed packs um, in one shot to uh, actually AGS, the, the grading company. So met those guys at a trade night. They said, you know, these look interesting because uh, they were all heavy. So they wanted to, you know, do them on like whatnot or something and then offer free AGS grading for the hollow. So um, ended up doing that, which gave me a little bit of room to play with. Um, I brought those packs and then I brought uh, some Weiss slabs to, to potentially sell or trade. And then one uh, Charizard, the PSA 8 1996 Bandai Cardass. Uh, map Charizard, you know, one of the first Charizards ever, because um, that set is the, the first ever, so pretty cool. So, made a few pickups while I was there, and and uh, a few awesome pulls. So let's let's go through the pulls, show you what we opened. So first and foremost, uh, Retro and I went in on a box of Acora together, went uh, side by side, uh, competing to see who got the best pulls. And I was able to hit the Jinsoku Juden, uh, full art. Really stoked about this one. Had not pulled this yet from Akora. I, I'm a big fan of Akora. So, um, and just that memory of, of going through the box with him and talking about it and hanging out. Uh, Retro's a great guy. Was really blessed to, to meet him. So I will uh, remember this fondly. I'll get that probably slabbed up and, and put in my personal collection for sure. Uh, reminds me of like, you know, like a hippogriff, like from Harry Potter. So really, really, really cool card. So uh, next, Jake from Pokenomics. Shout out to Jake. Uh, really, really enjoy getting to spend some time with him. Was handing out Korean Yu-Gi-Oh packs. And uh, so we were just at Swami's house Friday night, hanging out, having a good time, opening a bunch of packs. And Jake was just giving out free Korean Yu-Gi-Oh packs. And I opened, opened one and didn't hit anything. And then I opened the second one and hit a freaking Blue Eyes White Dragon. I mean, like the chase of the set, pretty freaking wild. So another one that I'm excited to get graded, like just for me. Um, might slap some pedigrees on these ones because they're just like really, really neat uh, to have, you know, in the in the collection. So pretty stoked on that one. This is a beautiful card. I've uh, been wanting to get into Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit. So great way to start. Thank you, Jake, so much for that. Then, of course, how could we forget Josh, the old card shop? We uh, swung by, you know, the tables many times and he was selling... Um, some Harry Potter Watsy era booster packs, and we were able to pull from Quidditch Cup, the chase, Harry the Seeker. Absolutely crazy luck. Um, this, this card looks wild on camera, enjoy that. This one actually looks super clean in my experience of, of uh, pulling these, grading them. There are no print lines. Just one little whitening back there, perhaps. Another one where I will put in my collection and, and hold fondly based on uh, those memories. So really cool to, to pull that at his table uh, with a bunch of friends, Rob and Mertz and, and Old Card Shop and Jake. 
by there and a few others. So that was awesome. Thanks again to the old card shop. Then I decided to be a dummy and uh, rip some heavy Japanese expedition because I never got the chance to do so before. So here we go. First pull is the Typhlosion. The Typhlosion, there's some stuff on this card saver. Uh, the Typhlosion, which is, is pretty sick. Definitely a nice hollow. A um, little bit of centering issue. The size is definitely thicker, but all in all looks pretty nice so another one that i'll that i'll put in my collection um as a, as a memory there i believe we'll see and then let's put that down lastly so ended up with a little you know, opened the pack and was like oh there's a little ding on it which is going to happen when you're opening vintage that's been bouncing around for 30 years but we pulled the freaking gengar at swami's house one of if not my the best one of my favorite cards in the entire set it's spooky season y'all and we hit the gengar so it was really stoked about that as well even though it's got a little mark on it just super amped uh to have that that one in the in the collection as well so that that one's gonna be special too one of my favorites love psychic pokemon um and to pull that with everyone there and, and have that on video and those memories is uh pretty special so that same night We'll go through some of the pickups. Uh, I picked this up from Dan. Wanted to have one of these sealed in my collection. Um, these are the original base theme decks from Japan. You get a guaranteed hollow. You get a bunch of awesome cards. You get a sweet Chansey coin, you know, the whole nine yards. So um, these are actually pretty sweet from an EV standpoint to open. Uh, don't tell anyone I told you that, but, you know, is what it is. But uh, this one I think is going to stay sealed uh, for me. So I, I sold a heavy base set pack. And so for less than that, I was able to pick up, you know, one of these from my collection, which was pretty cool. So shout out, Dan, Catch Mall Collectibles. Great to meet you, buddy, and uh, thank you for that. So next up, we have, ah, uh, yes, from uh, Retro, the Ampharos Rulers of the Heavens, first edition, hollow, Ampharos EX with a swirl, you know, Swirls Get Girls. Check out that uh, link in the description for the uh, Swirls Get Girls apparel. But yeah, uh, Ampharos I think is a really underrated Pokemon by popularity. It's one I really love. These EX cards like the Lapras and, and some of the other ones are, are, are big favorites of mine, the Chansey. Um, been looking for the Ampharos in Japanese with a swirl and uh, was able to take it home. So I paid 75 bucks for this one of those purchases where you're just buying it irregardless of value. You don't even want to be smart, but like, I don't necessarily think that's going to be worth that uh, down the road, but we'll see. Don't really care. Uh, that one's going in the PC and was really cool to buy it from him. So uh, next up, we got ourselves another stupid fun little one. The uh, paid 40 bucks for the Spanish World Collection Pikachu. Um, Spanish is my second language by uh, having learned it since I was a small child. Uh, this is a Pikachu illustrated by Jimeno with Spanish on it. Can't go wrong. Just a fun little purchase for my collection. Again, uh, probably not smart value wise, but um, it was market and it is a beautiful card and it, it goes in my Pikachu collection and I'm a sucker for Jimeno. So. Next, we had a uh, another little pickup. This one was like 40 bucks as well. This is one I've been eyeing actually, and I just can't remember what pricing usually is, but saw it for 45, offered 40 cash, walked away with it, didn't think about it too much. The Pocket Monsters Graffiti uh, from Bandai 98. Um, this is the Pikachu Charmander Bulbasaur and Squirtle. I love that he's got the rice ball on his head. This, this card I just think is beautiful and iconic. Um, I think this artwork is phenomenal. I love these graffiti cards. I have a few other ones, including the uh, Togepi Riding Lapras. So I was stoked, <coughs> excuse me, to pick this one up. Take a drink here. I was stoked to pick this one up just because, you know, I was surprised at how much uh, Meiji and Bandai and basically Japanese non-TCG that I saw there. So I was really amped to, uh, to pick that one up, put it in my collection. And then last, and, but certainly not least, from the homie Nick Baybay, he's part of Rock Mountain TCG. You can uh, check him out here, Rock Mountain TCG. He has the rest of this set. Shout out Nick at Baybay. This card, I traded the PSA 8, 
Bandai Map Charizard. And 100 or 150 bucks? Let's say 150, I think. Uh, he had it listed at 500. There's no way I was going to pay 500 cash for this card because it's just too esoteric and hard to value. But for a trade with 150 bucks out of pocket, we went for it. There was a game in Japan in 2014, the Battle Stadium. And it had a set of 10 cards, I believe. There are two Charizards, there's a Sceptile, there's a Gyarados. And we took home the Mega Gyarados Hollow BGS 8.5. I mean, y'all know I'm a nine collector and I, I love Beckett. So 8.5 is a strong grade for me here. These cards got beat to heck because you played with them with the actual game. You can, uh, you know, my editing skills suck, but you can go look up the... Um, 2014 XY Battle Stadium uh, game where it kind of looks like Battleship where there's like two um, basically like plastic pieces that, that you're across from your opponent on. But for me, for a Gyarados collector, to have the only one of these graded in the world is something pretty special. And to pick that up in person at Collecticon, I mean, I, I'm amped on this pickup. I think it's such a cool card. I have no idea how to assign value to it. Don't really care. Was an easy purchase for me with the trade and didn't even think, you know, that hard about it. Um, just, it was one of those things where I walked through the show and when I saw this card and its surrounding counterparts from the set, it just drew me in. Like it just, it's that wow factor that you don't always get a lot in life. And I just really thought, this was a special one, and I felt like I had to have it for my collection. So, was uh, was really stoked. Thank you again, Nick, for the for the good deal. Uh, I'm really really stoked to to have this in the forever collection uh, to go along with all the Garys and Magikarps you see in the background, y'all. So, uh, those are the pickups. More importantly, uh, again, I I just cannot underscore how much freaking fun I had, how amazing the people in this community are. If you have not been to an in-person event ever, um, you know, I used to go to card shows back in the day, you know, kind of all through my life, mostly like sports oriented ones. And then I go to local ones as well. But I would highly suggest going to a Collecticon if you can. I believe there will be seven next year. I will be in Orlando in February. I'll be vending. Come say hi. Book your tickets now. It is going to be an absolute blast. Hit me up on IG or in the comments if you need info, if you want to vend, if you just want to know who's going and hang out. Um, there, we were meant to live life together in person. Uh, and this hobby is best experienced in community, in person with people. So I, uh, I know that you know cards are cool, but they come and go. And, and the relationships you build, as hokey as it might sound, are, are truly forever. Um, and now I have friendships that, that transcend, you know, this hobby and, and are, are real and, and strong, you know, I got to meet Rob in person for the first time, hung out with Mertz, hung out with Cody, a fellow Gyarados collector. I mean, Jake freaking, uh, Nick old school. I mean, the, all the guys I listed, Dan, I mean, uh, Nesto, Colson, Retro, I mean, the list goes on. I'm at, you know, Gemmin Pokemon. I mean, it's just like so um, freaking peak. How could I forget peak? Had a blast with him. Like it just, these people are so awesome. And, and truly what you see online is what you're getting, y'all. It, it, truly wonderful, wonderful people in this portion of our community. So I would encourage you to be there. Uh, if you have any questions about the event, uh, let me know. I would say that I was personally surprised by the, the amount of buying that's happening right now. It's pretty amazing to see tons of liquidity, tons of transactions happening. So if you want to go and vend, if you want to go with the intention of buying, there is a ton of variety, a ton of cool stuff, and most importantly, amazing people to spend time with. So as always, y'all, I am Connor from Rock Pokemon. I I had such a blast at Collecticon Denver. I feel so freaking blessed. Still recovering. Haven't slept that much. Well worth it. Um, and that's all I got. As always, collect what you love, but do it intelligently. See y'all soon.